Welcome back. Another edition of Down and Back with Corn Dog. This is a show that's probably been a year in the making that I've been chasing this guy around, trying to get him to uh, to come on and talk. But he's just been, well, you've probably seen him on Facebook. He's been all over the place. But, uh, well, he's here, Rob Chismark. Uh, we'll get to him in a second. We've got a couple news and notes to get along with. Um, if you remember, St. Thomas, Ontario, you're starting up next. Actually, I'm oh, sorry, tonight here, Wednesday night, um, Railway City Brewery. Uh, check them out on Facebook, and uh, you'll get the time because uh, I know Jeff's got a, a lot of things planned for there. Another another new league starting up. Wallaceburg, Ontario, will be starting up next Wednesday night. Uh, I believe it's 8 p.m. at the uh, Wallaceburg Moose Lodge. Um, I know Travis there is uh, is hoping to get a bunch of people. I don't think you have 30 people. He's got 20 so far, so he's uh, hoping another 10 people to sign up. So you can just check out uh, either St. Thomas Cornhole. Uh, on Facebook or Wallaceburg Cornhole League on Facebook. Uh, check them out, send them a message. And uh, let's, let's another two more leagues in Ontario, which is great. I think we're up to like nine or 10 leagues. Uh, we're really starting to fill out. So uh, without further ado, Rob Chismark, welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thank you very much. That's really cool. Uh, them league announcements. That's awesome to just hear the growth that's going on in Canada. I know when we met, it was what, two years ago at uh, Cherokee. Yeah, uh, you guys were just just kind of getting started and bringing your eight or nine guys down there to to that world championship. Then uh, it was great to meet you then, obviously, yeah. and we have so we have kept in touch. And you're right; it's been about at least a year that you've been asking me to come on, and uh, it's a I, it's a pleasure well, to be here, man. Thank you. Well, well, you're you're you're. Let's see. Let's let, let's count the things. You're a player. You're a director. You're a cornhole entrepreneur, and you're you're I guess you can say a cornhole host because you're the voice of Spencer McKenzie's when they're on the uh, on the air, and now TV commentator. Like you're like just <laughs> everything in the cornhole world. It, you know, it, it's a blessing. Um, I had no idea what it was going to be like when I got started. I just wanted to play, to be honest with you. Um, and then when I when Facebook Live started to get uh, popular. I couldn't stand listening to the bags hit the board. So I had to do something different. And since then, it's just kind of, it's blown up for me. And again, it's a blessing and I love it. Oh, I know. I, I, I have so much fun talking about it and then now calling games whenever we go live, because it's, it seems like my, once I started talking, my game went downhill, but I'm, like I said, I'm having more fun kind of doing this. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say that I'm having more or less fun either way, but my game did the same thing. Or maybe it never elevated to a place where I was better. But uh, since I started talking, I definitely haven't been able to put in the same kind of effort for practicing and, and being the player that I want to be. But I, when you're in the game, you're in the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you've, you've been in the game a lot longer than I have. And and you might be able to hear we've got boards being made down to my left. Um, That's awesome. You've uh, you've been in the game a lot longer than I have. So what changes have you seen come along? Uh, I guess probably the biggest change has been in the bag technology, is what I'll call it. Um, and of course, the growth in people. More of a mainstream situation with the sport, but the biggest change is definitely the bag technology, which it's kind of crazy because in the beginning it was one-sided bags, right? And they were, they were as slick as you could be until it got a little bit humid until the sun went down or like, you know, some humidity kicked in. So that was the only time it ever got sticky, but it got really sticky with that duck canvas. And what we've done now is we, we've kind of reverted back to those corn bags on those plywood boards and we're all just trying to get the fastest, most hole friendly bag out there. So that's probably been the, the biggest change. Well, yeah. It's, and, and you talk about going to that, uh, that those faster bags because the ACL has come up with their new, uh, their new bag kind of technology stuff and all the, all the pro bags that are out. And we were, I was looking at that with Matt with Octane here the other night. And I think there's only like four bags that you can consider a sticky bag that it's going to be used by the pros this year. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, with the, 
some some of the most controllable double slick though you're going to get those pro advantages um by reynolds and reynolds with his carpet side is kind of what's taken the place of uh the swage you know for the control so you can put a bag where you want it and it'll stay there the game changer of course has got that suede patch on it which is always uh going to be a little bit more controllable than anything else but you're right with only four or so different selections it's it's just crazy to see how it's changed into that, you know? Mm -hmm. So then getting, we'll go into your, your entrepreneurial stage, I guess. So you're, you're with, you're with Boardman with, with, with Davis. How, how have you guys evolved since you started? Because I'm guessing you were probably one of the first ones out there. I, you know, we, we started at that, that same, that same Cherokee that I met you. That was the first time we ever okay. unveiled Boardman. Um, we were nothing but really like, t-shirts and apparel we wanted to be jerseys and things like that and i was i was uh you know i was making boards but it was maybe 10 a month and it wasn't anything that was going to be big but i needed to do something to put myself in this game so that i would be focused on what the game is so becoming that sort of you call it an entrepreneur uh in in the cornhole world it was just what what I thought was the next logical step from being a player. Um, and we, we really put it together because Davis and I, he runs some of the best events like on the face of the planet down there in South Florida. So we knew that if we put our heads together, that we could end up directing some pretty nice size events. And we really put this together as like a cornhole company that really wasn't involved in equipment. We were, we were involved in the customization of things, jerseys, bags, boards, you know, design, things like that. That's what, that's where we started. And then all of a sudden with that, bring your own bag policy, where they were going to do a list and, and you had to be on it. We were like, you know what, let's do bags. So that's, that's how it all happened. Really. It was just a bunch of, uh, I don't know, wild hairs. Can we call it wild hairs? <laughs> It could be a lot, you know, and your logo and everything, you, you see it out there everywhere on, on, on a lot of the pros that are playing, especially the pros in South Florida, because, well, let's face it, you only got a couple pros in South Florida, right? Yeah, and only, yeah, just a few. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Seems you like know, it's like we do have former world champions and, and even uh, current reigning world champions wear, wear the stuff, and they do it. they do it because they like it. They don't necessarily do it because we hand it out or anything like that. They do it because they like it. And Davis is one of the best designers. Not only not only is he a great director, but he's one of the best designers I've ever seen. And he does some of the most one-of-a-kind things that you've ever seen in the game. But when you've seen his designs, as long as I have, you can start seeing his signature on things. And that's one of the coolest things that I've ever experienced is just seeing my partner do design and and knowing which which logos are his and which aren't. And, and being able to show somebody else some of his signatures, they're just like, wow. So, yeah, we if, if you notice our logo, people kind of, when they first see it, they look at it and they're like, man, that's crooked. Well, Davis designed that logo to be the exact angle of a cornhole board. So boardmen going up at that angle is because, you know, it's by design. So it's just some of the cool subtleties that, that Davis does. Well, and, and the thing I noticed with, with you guys was – um, the fun you guys have when you work, if we can call it work. When I, when right. I first seen you in Cherokee, it was because every time you walked by your, your booth, it was like there was something, somebody was laughing, someone was having fun. And then, you know, I could see there was a couple of things where I could see you the rest of the week. We say one word to each other. And then it was just laughing about that thing that was from a couple <laughs> days ago. That's still crazy. Right. Like, yeah. That's, that was the big thing was like you guys had just brought the fun back in from what I could see. Yeah. And to us, that's what it was always about. That's why, you know, it, it was the next logical step because we wanted to maintain that lightheartedness and, and the fun of exactly what you're talking about. We, we have a lot of fun. Um, I, it's, it's tough when I have to be serious too, because the, the fun part, you know, being, I'm the conference director down here in the Southeast, which is, we're about to have our first conference event um, this weekend, the 13th, 14th and 15th down in St. Augustine, um, the St. John's County 
convention center and I, I've had to be serious the past couple of weeks with, you know, different player levels and things like that. And that's mm-hmm. not my favorite part of the game at all. <laughs> no. So we'll, we'll get into that, that your, your conference event coming up, but I want to, I want to touch base as well too. your local stuff that we see you online having fun down there and just the way you tie charity stuff into your local nights as well too. Yeah. Like I know up here we've, we've been talking the last week or so, like for when we do start up back up with our league, how can we make a pipe for that, for your, you know, you've got that St. <laughs> Michael soldiers pipe that you, that you have for, for the charity throw, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, we got that started, man. St. Michael's is something that's kind of close to us. I'm a veteran. I have a purple heart. Uh, and for the longest time, I wanted to support something that you didn't hear anything about scandal and things along that line. Um, and Jim and Kathy, they put this thing together. She, if you ever read the story at stmichaelsoldiers.org, it's unbelievable, the story. If you don't tear up, I don't care how tough you are. If you don't tear up from hearing the story of how this thing came about, you, you, I, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> so uh, being able to get involved with them, knowing that every dollar that is raised, if it's $1 or $1,000, goes straight back to the charity and helps the deployed active duty members as well as what they do with veterans. Uh, knowing that all that is happening, is it, it, it hits me in the right place, if that makes sense. So we well, started with the, we we started that pipe, and uh, we started it with a sponsorship from St. Michael's, and they started off at a thousand dollars, and we kind of cap it, and we're keeping it at we we let it rise to as high as two thousand dollars. So at any time, it's five hundred dollars per bag, and then at once once it eclipses that two thousand, we give back everything back to St. Michael's as well. So. It's just fun. It's a way to give back. Uh, three years ago, we were doing this thing. We were playing local blind draws. We were probably doing like 28 a month, like no lie. We were playing every night and in some places twice on the same night. Uh, Ryan Johnson, you've had Ryan on. Yep, yep. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Johnson and I were the local cornhole guys, first coast cornhole. And we were doing a bunch of local stuff in bars. And then it, we started to realize that it wasn't really – it wasn't really going in the direction that we wanted it to. And things kind of changed for us and we stopped doing them for maybe a year and a half. And what we wanted to do when we came back was make sure that it was some sort of a service. They were giving something back from everything that we were doing. And Tuesdays and Thursday nights allow us to do that. Yeah. And, and you know, I guess it's fitting that we're talking about this on we're, we're, this show will be put on a veterans day, which is remembrance day up here. But you know, like you said, with, with just some of the stories, I, uh, I we've talked. I've got to get down to Daytona to visit you for a, a NASCAR race down there. But for me, the uh, the guys that I've hooked up with, I camp with in in Charlotte, they bring in uh, like about a hundred wounded warriors for uh, Memorial Day. So wow. I've been able to see just what what they deal with, and it's just you know it's 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 really heartbreaking. Like I used to tell my wife about the stuff that these guys would would have to deal with. And then when she did come down one year, she was like, wow, because, you know, like with Memorial Day there, it's the big thing. They got the flyovers. They got, you know, there's there's kind of fake bombs going off to kind of replicate some stuff. And they don't tell you about the practice of that the day right. of. And all of a sudden at like 10 o'clock in the morning, these will start going off. And you see guys that are just diving under tables because it's just, it brings everything back. So, you yeah. know, any, any charity for that for me is, is, you know, is, is well worth it. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. That's awesome. Yeah. I like that story too. And I, I know oh. I'd be one of those dudes diving just so you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just, oh, it's just, it's, it, it's just, it, it, it's, 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 it's tough to see, you know, to, to be honest, as a guy who, who had never served, had family that served, but it's just, it's still tough to see. So, but, uh, but yeah, so we get back to your league stuff here because I've talked with, uh, well, when, when Ryan was on, when Ryan and Luke were on, because I feel, I guess I can be, I feel honored to say that I was that first notch on the uh, on the belt for for Luke for his first his first win at a major event, but uh, but yeah, it it seemed like there was a while there where like almost all of the top young players were coming out of South Florida. 
Yeah, uh, and it and it. I think it's going to continue. I think you're going to see a couple of guys, at least from the Southeast Conference. I I, I don't want to say they're all going to come from Florida, but from the Southeast Conference, we've got we've got Tucker Stills coming, and then we've got the the Cobb boys that are going to be coming from Mississippi area. Tucker's from Georgia, but you're going to see an influx of yet again new rookies to the pro division that are going to start making some noise and and you know, knocking down the door here for the, what I like to say, the Southeast conference. And, you know, I'm, I'm a huge big 10 fan, so it's really tough to say the sec a lot, but <laughs> it, it works out because it's cornhole and, and, and I'm honored to be the commissioner of this conference. Well, and, and then again, for, you know, I, you know, I had Maya cup on before and I was like, you know, do us that, that women's game. And, and you were able to be right there firsthand that first day of the ACL finals that, they came in with a bang. It was just, oh man, it was you know, unbelievable. Like, here they are, like you know, Sarah Cassidy was just, you know, it's like, you know, like I, I had said even after I did a little thing afterwards, I was like, you know, we were expecting to see Sam Finley, Christine Papke there, and it was like, right, all it's like the new kids all came in and said, we're taking over. Yeah, Sarah, with the way she just. She just took over the game each time she was in one. You could see that it didn't the, – the, the level didn't bother her at all. And that was something that was just awesome, being there behind the, you know, behind the microphone and being able to watch and talk about it was – that was really awesome for me. It was my first time actually being somewhere on a, you know, a real broadcast. And, and just to see our you – know, the Southeast Conference do it again was – amazing man she's we have the world champions in both singles and doubles in women's uh this year and we had them last year so two years in a row with doubles and that to me i mean that's awesome that's that's part of the part of why i like doing it now it's i'd, I'd love to, be able to sit down and talk with her about her throwing style because we'd noticed up here and, and even some of the guys have been tried up here where she has she switches feet depending on what side of the board that she's on. Like, what was the one thing that we really noticed? And it was like, well, because you see so many people that have their stance and their stance is going to stay that way. But she, depending on the side of the board, she switches. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I just, and the fact that it stays completely consistent, there's nothing that even, it doesn't seem to bother at all. You know, no. every once in a while during the the finals, you know, as she was rolling through the bracket, sometimes the first bag might have gotten away from her, but it was pretty darn slick down there. So she loves she was throwing them game changers and it it just it's you know, sometimes they get away from you. <laughs> well, and the other thing I noticed that you know, being so young and her first time on the on the big stage, you know, it she uh she got down a bit there, especially on Maya Cup. And right. it seemed like she was fine to give up those one or two points until she got her game back. And then she just bulldozed away through the rest of the game, which not many people can do that in Cornwall because you get that mentality where like, oh, I'm down. I got to start really going for it. But she was able to just, you know what, I'm going to put the bag on the board and just keep my rhythm going. And, you know, she's been doing it throughout each division, right? So I've had the, I've had the pleasure of moving her up from – the lowest division to the middle division, all the way up to, uh oh, <laughs> lost a lost an earbud, uh, all the way up to, um, advanced. Did you lose me? Oh, here, I'm sorry. No, I got you back. Yeah, here. Oh, here. <laughs> all, all the way up to advanced, and then the the competition that she is able to play against is the reason that she can maintain that composure all the way, all the time. I mean, when you have to face Samantha Finley and Cheyenne Renner and Rosie Streaker and Lori Duell and April Chismark and, and Susan Finley, when you have to face those ladies in women's and then you're playing doubles against, you know, Ashton and Tanner and you're playing doubles against Noah and Matthew and Emery, you, you, Composure is just something that's like second nature. You have to stay in the game long enough to win. Yeah, just hearing you say that, it's like, man, it's like, well, it's like Cleveland and, and some of the Virginia places. It's like you're just talking about like a, almost a full national there where, where, <laughs> where I'm, I'm lucky. I just have to sometimes face a, a Jamie Cowan and a, and a Scott Sullivan up here where the, the two big guys for that. So it's, 
you know, I used to have a chance of finishing in maybe a top three, but down there it's just it's crazy. Right, right. It it, it scares people away from the advanced division is what it really does down here. They they I hear words like donate. I hear words like I'm never going to crack the top ten. I'll never get any money back. You know, and and I get it. I totally understand that these people are seasoned and they're out here to to win. But I feel like with that attitude, you're guaranteed not to do anything big. But a, a lot of the the newcomers, they don't they don't see it the same way. So that's the beauty of this game. You know, it gives you a chance to see newcomers and old guys alike, and just what type of attitudes. You know, just like you said, it's almost like a full national. I didn't even didn't even mention Scott Lane and Chris Kachia yeah. and Dalton McClem and Kyle Malone. You know, I didn't even mention yeah. those guys. So, yeah. you know, well, world champions and national champions is just unbelievable what we have around here. Well, you can almost say that the people, you know, thinking here, the people that are saying that they're just donating or whatever, that's what people are probably thinking of, of Sarah Cassidy going into that ACL finals because you got right. all those other top women where – she came in and she was like, you know what? I can do this. And, you know, you, you hate to say it, but the slogan is anyone can play, anyone can win. It can happen. Yeah, and she's never questioned her ability. She has always played to the best of her ability. She may not have always wanted to move forward and and play against all the toughest competition, but she's done it every time that, it, that, that she's had to. So – and you see what she does. She ends up on top. She she has her practice regimen. She plays on her days of the week that she can play, and she just continues to to be solid and consistent. So now we've we've already mentioned a bunch of names, but you like you said you have that conference coming up. Yep. So to set sort of a a preview, because I'm not going to say that um, we have some stakes in the game down at that conference that's coming up, because okay. we do have some some octane throwers that are down in there that are going to be playing, you know, we've got, you know, Mike Ferreira, who's now moved down into that conference. Who's going right. to be there. Uh, Hasib Habibian throws it. Um, we've got Colby Usry and uh, Anderson Glenn, who are, are trying to step up to, to move into those pro ranks again. And there's, there's Melissa Morrison that's going to be there. So there's, for us, it's, we're going to be keeping a, a close eye on that, on that tournament. Oh yeah. And you should, and each and every one of those athletes that you mentioned are, all have a chance. Uh, Kobe Estri is a guy who has been a pro, decided to take some time off, just had a new baby and things. So he's ready. He he knows he wants to be a pro again. And uh, teaming up with Anderson Glenn, that's a guy who's been a – he's been a young guy. He's come a long way. He, he started in the lower division and just moved, worked his way up. And through practice and virtual training and being able to play once, twice a week, you know, he's, he's stepped up his game. And Kobe and he will have they, – they could be a dark horse uh, in these in the advanced doubles division. And then with Melissa, uh, she's a newly minted pro uh, and just decided to start throwing octane. She's mm -hmm. been on fire lately. She's been playing every weekend. And she's been coming out with a one or a two holding up over the past four or five weekends I've been noticing. And she just won't stop playing. She just knows that she needs the reps, and that's what she does. And Hasib is, I think, maybe uh, – three or four time champion at our conferences in seniors. So I expect for him to do very well in seniors on the, the first night of the conference. And then with him and Mike, they just won a regional just Sunday um, at, in the Daytona uh, area. They beat, I believe they beat um, Ashton Spies and Scott Schultz, two pros as well in the finals. They had to be double dip. They sat in a king seat and they took care of it. So you, every one of your the octane athletes have a chance, and they they're going to be in the running. So you got you you're going to be you're going to have fun. You're going to be able to watch some pretty sweet broadcast Friday. I think we're going to do the whole women's doubles division. We switch from women's singles to women's doubles. I think that seems to be a little bit more fun. It gets more women exposed, and we're gonna we're gonna have a real nice live feed through the Boardman Cornhole Facebook, and possibly through some of the St. Johns County stuff. But you'll be able to catch it on the Boardman Cornhole for sure on Facebook. And we're just going to try to do a real professional live feed with, with that women's division coming down on Friday night. And we'll probably show the finals of the juniors and seniors on Friday as well. And then Saturday and Sunday, you know, uh, we're going to have our singles and doubles will be on Saturday. And then all the blind draws will be on Sunday. So we had to move it to three days. 
it's a pretty well attended conference. Hoping to have 64 sets of boards out there. And it's in a it's just a beautiful location inside the Renaissance St. John's County Convention Center. It's gonna be awesome. So you've already said a bunch of pros. Is there anyone that's kind of maybe in like the advanced or lower divisions that you could see maybe making a big splash? Absolutely. Um, the, the Cobb boys, only one of them is a pro. So there's two other Cobb brothers that are a little younger that, uh, I can see really doing something crazy and you can never forget the Rawls boys right here from Middleburg, Florida, those kids there, they seem to, they, they try to dominate the conference. In fact, Alex told me he's, uh, 16 years old and he told me he doesn't see how anybody's going to beat him at the conference and he's a, an advanced level player been playing for probably two and a half years and like i always say on tuesday night uh it's the house that rawls built they're the ones who made creek life famous and they they're 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 doing what they do every week if they're there they're almost guaranteed to be one of them in the finals and and it, you may see that again at the conference which is great and and you mentioned Dalton McClellan before, and what still amazes me is I thought he was older than what he was because we seen him back. I was able to watch him play my regular partner in a blind draw back in, in 2018 there. But, you know, you come to realize that he's only, what, 17 now? 17, or he would have been like yeah. He would have been like 15 back then, and he was yeah. just taking people down. And it's like, you know, it just makes you feel older. And, and seeing how young <laughs> Luke was – yeah it's like yeah. man it's, yeah luke it's... is 16 now um dalton is 17 we we got some real young guns and like i said uh alex is 16 and he does he wants to he's going to play in the qualifier this year and he plans to be a pro moving forward so we we got a lot of young guys we got some i i tell you what um you've seen uh saint michael soldiers thursday night over at dick's wings in fleming island and we've got these guys that started coming out there and they were brand new the first, like maybe the second week that we did it. And they came out and they've been practicing in their backyard. They've been practicing with old equipment, you know, some corn bags and some old slide rights and just stuff that, you know, they didn't, they were just backyard players. Well, they've come out here, uh, a fellow named Brock Miller. He's going to come out and he's, he's going to play in the intermediate division uh, this time it's going to be his first actual ACL event besides a local when he goes to this conference and he's got a, a uh, his partner is going to be uh, Tommy Walling. They're going to play together in doubles. And I really think they're going to start making some noise and making some people go a little crazy. And then we got Brentley Miller and Brandon, Brendan Brunson who have where they started off uh, the first month at the regional they were in the novice division. Well, they just dominated that division. It was terrible. So we moved them up to the intermediate division. Well, they dominated that one as well. So we just kept on moving them. Now they're they're stuck in a competitive division. And crazy enough, they won last night at the regional in Daytona. So I'm not ready to move them up to advance yet. But this conference could definitely push them up into the advance. And they're 14 and 15. So. They're ready. They're, we just we, we do have the young guns. Well, and, and that's what I love. And, and last week I had a show, did the show with, with Louis Dupree, who was – I had met him in, in at, a, at a NASCAR race a couple years ago, started talking to him again kind of before COVID hit, and I was like, you know what, man, you got to get into a league. You got to get some better bags. You got to get into a league. And he's now went into his he's, – he started up in a league. We start actually joined the ACL, and it's just – you see so many people that are joining it coming out of that backyard – and just having fun. Like he was, he was just amazed as well too, that you could go to a tournament and so many pros were just happy to give him advice and, and help him out. And it's just, you know, and that's the way I felt back in 2018 with, with yourself and, 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 and Timothy Pitcher and, and even Trevor Brooks. I had a little bit of a conversation with him. It's just, <laughs> you know, my favorites. <laughs> oh, he's, 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 he's right behind you and trying to get him on the show because, Man, I he was my guy. I loved watching him because that that competitive that he had on and just it was just it was it was fun to watch. And 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 that's why I say to everyone, if you can go in and be able to watch, get a chance to watch an ACL event live, go and do it. Even if you're not playing, just go in because my still my favorite time was watching a crew cup game 
with uh, Brooks Graham, and, I, and they were with Scott Point, Lane. Probably. No, oh, okay. Scott no, Lane. Sorry, no, they were, uh, no, no, it wasn't Scott Lane. It was it was Dotson and I uh, and Short. Okay. We're, we're we're one team, and Camba Baldwin, Henderson, and I want to say Ryan Windsor was the other team, and okay. just. And it was like eleven o'clock at night, so they had already had a whole bunch of performance enhancing beverages, and just the fun they had playing was just great to see. Watching, watching Trevor trying to get Jordan off his game by just you know doing anything he could, and Jordan just being stone faced, right? He is, isn't so he? Like, isn't he? Yeah, oh. he's, he's good at that. But then you're looking at, at at the size of Jordan and the size of Trevor, and you're like, just don't don't just turn around and hurt him. <laughs> He won't, man. No. Jordan's a gentle giant for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, he, you know, and, and he's another great guy that's just come on the show, and it's just, you know, it's the ACL has so many great players that you see them on the boards. They look stone faced. They're a game, but then away from the boards, they're just it's fun. You know, they're all just they they don't care what happened on the board. They're just there to have fun with each other. Yeah, I don't know about Trevor. He sometimes carries it with him, <laughs> but. <laughs> We, I, that's we've okay had with me. Plenty of good times. <laughs> yeah. So we've talked about stuff on the boards here with you. I know that you and I have had other conversations, kind of about non cornhole stuff. Like I remember the one night I was sitting with my wife at a pita place, and you messaged me like you're watching a CFL football game, and all of a sudden we just, we just started talking about that, and it's just so. What's Rob Chismark? away from the boards is it is it full on like you are when you're on the boards or are you kind of a little simmered down a bit i i really probably am not the one to answer that question because <laughs> i i don't know that i'm full on ever but you know it's, i feel like i'm simmered down a lot but uh yeah you know i i, I mean i enjoyed just like you said we were sitting there uh i just started messaging you because i was watching because i was watching that game yeah. And I was I was learning the history of it, and I'm I'm really big on. I like to learn about other people's experiences. I don't know if you've ever seen my show, or, or my interviews with the You Got Robbed uh, with TalkOneHole.com and the mm-hmm. You Got Robbed. What I really like to do is learn about people's experiences and where they come from. Yesterday, I had the absolute pleasure of meeting Mike Malarkey who's a 33 year veteran of the NFL. And I just put on my, uh, like my learning uh, cap and, and my listening ears. And I just started asking him questions that I don't know if anybody's ever asked them before, but just little questions like did the 33 years, were you satisfied? You know, what, what was it that, uh, what, you know, why are you out? Um, would you go back? Uh, what were you, were you happier as a position coach, coordinator, head coach, you know, just cool questions that I was just trying to learn. I was just trying to, to get him to just to get him to let me in on his experiences. And that's kind of what, that's what I like. I like to get to know people and learn their experiences, you know, just to, to gain more knowledge, I guess. <laughs> Well, and and what and and that's the thing I like with your your show because kind of like with here, I like just having a conversation. Forget about the set questions. Let's just start talking about stuff, and whatever comes up, we might right. go in that direction, might go in this direction. Just have a talk. You know, it's we're it's just it's almost like you just want to just have a beer, have a talk about talk about cornhole. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that was the the whole premise of talk cornhole was I. I kind of wanted to just start recording like round tables where four or five of us are talking about the game and we're all, we're all sharing our opinions and just being, uh, you know, honest with each other just around, just like you said, you know, maybe even in the middle of a card game or something, but we're just talking about the game and where it's going and what's new. And that was my whole idea. And even when I started the, you got robbed, I really didn't want it to be something. I didn't even want to focus on the pros, but with all the stuff that kind of happened in 2020, we were we had to figure out a way to be able to produce a show that, uh, you know, with people that we knew that we were close to. So that's why my first show was with my wife. And I, I had some really cool questions for her because I wanted to know how she felt about the league and, and what they do for women. And 
you know, was she satisfied with it? Things like that. And, but in the beginning, I, I never wanted it to be about the pros because I feel like you get to see a lot of them already. But now that we have 256 of them, you know, maybe I should focus on the pros, but I did get kind of get a commitment from Mr. Malarkey to come on and, and sit down with me for an interview. So, uh, you know, maybe there's other chances to get other people and, and see how the, the game of cornhole affects their community. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, and that's well. That, that was kind of the premise that I started this one off was because most of our players didn't know anything about the pros. So I just kind of started with the pros, talking with them, you know, talking, you know, having Robbie Graham on, having Pitcher on, just kind of talking about their experiences and what they've done. And uh, and and now in true fashion of just having the conversation, you're talking about a roundtable, which made me just think of something else that happened <laughs> at a roundtable I had up here with some guys. Nice. And I'm going to pose the question to you is, we have our four. We, we have our four bags, right? You can, you're, they all have to be the same. What if it was opened up to be able to have? You can have any four bags as long as they look the same, same colors, same design on them. But you can have the the double slick, have a, a sticky bag, but kind of like kind of like a golf bag where you can go in, you can you can pull out this one here. You can usually only use your four bags for your game, but depending on how the boards are, you can kind of change up your bags. I, I like that idea. There's another idea that I've been I, that I was talking with a buddy, uh, Chris Cachia. He's a fellow pro. He's down in South Florida. That's a, another idea. Is not one real sport, golf, tennis, um, even you know, I guess basketball is always inside. But you figure golf and tennis, they're kind of individual sports, but they never play their their majors or their nationals are on the same track. You know, you've got the French Open, which is on clay, and you've got you, you've got Wimbledon, and, and that's on grass. And then you've got the U.S. Open, which is on, you know, concrete. So he was talking about having nationals in different conditions. You know, mm -hmm. really find out who the best cornhole player is. To see the cream really rise to the top with the adjustments and all the different types of factors that could be there for you. You know, wind even rain you know stickiness because of the humidity outside or very slick because you're inside in air conditioning so those are a bunch of cool different ideas that i think as we progress through this and and the competition gets to the point where everybody's throwing four bags and we're gonna have to do something to change it to give ourselves something where it's some competition again i think yeah, like we'd, we'd really talked about the having to be able to change up your bags because that will that would really kind of change some stuff up because it seemed like during COVID when when the ghost cornhole and all the deck rounds really started to happen, it seemed like everybody was now just focused on I'm just putting in the hole, just putting in the right. hole, and you kind of seen that when we came back having having those those uh, those pro events that everyone was just going for the hole that and and. Pitcher, I'm, I, he was the one that came up with this. Well, told me about this is that some people are playing checkers, other people are playing chess, and right. we, I I felt we lost that chess game of throwing up that blocker, and it's starting to come back a little bit instead of just everything in the hole. And just it got kind of boring watching that. <laughs> it is. It's. I I tell people that all the time. It's hard to commentate when everybody just throwing something in the hole. There's nothing to talk about. You almost have to talk about history so that's why i like to get to learn other people's lives so i got something to talk about when they're just slinging four bags in a hole bag after bag after bag and it, you know but that's amazing too to watch somebody make 45 bags in a row i mean yeah. you you think the only way to do it is to stop them and you can see like baldwin when he went on that run in philadelphia and he made some like 36 out of 38 or something he didn't just make one shot it wasn't just slide him in you know, yeah. he, he made a number of different shots to make that happen. And I, I do think that there's chess still. It's just a, it's, it's just different. You know, it's just a different type of chess. The, the moves are smaller. You know, the misses are smaller. And, and that's what, you know, you want to have that whole friendly bag. So if you do miss that small, it, you still have a chance to bring it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, with, with talking about putting the, the, just a bag in the hole, I remember back in in Cherokee where I was in I was in some sort of tournament. I forget if it was just a blind draw start off in the morning, and the advanced singles had started off at the same time. And 
I laughed because I was I was two and done in my blind draw, and Matt Guy, who started his first game the same time I started my first game, was still going in his first game <laughs> while I was already back at the hotel. Yeah, that's right? crazy. That guy. He's something else, though, and he? he can make a lot of bags. <laughs> yeah, and 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 that was fun because we uh, some of our new leagues that were starting off. I, I know I was talking with Sean Sabine in, in Newfoundland, which I think if we can never get a tournament there, I need you going to, to Newfoundland because I think you would have fun there. But <laughs> talking with him, he uh, he said, "Yo, know, we were watching this guy on online. Nick. He was making all these bags." I'm like, "Yeah, that's because he's just." That's who that was his practice when Matt was doing all of his trick shot stuff and, oh, yeah. and everything. I'm like, I said, that's he's doing that stuff in his sleep. If you would actually be able to see him, but you know, how <laughs> great is it to have him back in the ACL now? I'm super happy. I'm really stoked. I, I let me tell you, let me tell you a story. This is a crazy story. So, Matt and Brett, they were making their announcement. You remember when all that time happened? Yep. They were making their announcement. Oh, maybe I already told you this story. Well. Here I am, like, I don't do a lot of this type of streaming, right? So I they agreed to have an exclusive interview directly after the announcement, right? They were still sitting in the same cool chairs in front of their Guy Nation banner and everything. And they said, yeah, yeah, come on, we'll do it live. We'll get it on. So I get up on there and I get them to do a Facebook call and everything. And I have this bad to the bone interview with these two guys with all that emotion, just talking about how it's going to be incredible, you know, crazy that we just learned that you're the the winningest you know singles uh, national winner you know we talked about all that stuff and how they were looking forward to stuff and you know they I don't even know if they mentioned that they were going to be playing with other people yet I can't remember if they did that oh yeah they did cuz but cuz I asked Matt the emotion was incredible well guess what that was just a live call. I didn't even get to record it or anything. And I knew I couldn't recreate it again. So I was like, what a dummy. <laughs> so that, that's, that was the day I think that I might have reached out to you to find out what do you yeah. use because yeah. it was just, I, man, I was so mad at myself because it was such an incredible opportunity for that announcement. You know, I asked crazy questions like, why don't you want to be 10 time king of cornhole? And, you know, and, and, and he answered, you know, he answered all my questions and it was, mm -hmm. you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> well, I told you like, they're like, everyone thinks all the, the podcast stuff with the show and video is, it's, oh, it's all easy. Well, not at all. Like there's been times like, well, Christine Papke on the show, it took three, three times to be able to get it. You know, that was, that was like a, almost a month period trying to get her to be, oh, be able to connect up with her to, cause we, we had the time, but then technology wouldn't work. And, I just had it with my cup where all of a sudden, you know, my lighting wouldn't work. Sound didn't work. And it's like, Jeez. are you kidding me? So it's just, you know, it's, it's not all roses. It's these, these things are actually kind of hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, you make it look easy. <laughs> it's, you know, I, just, it's, I, I wish it's I hard knew sometimes how to make it look easy. Then <laughs> I made, I made the call easy, <laughs> man. Was that mad? <laughs> I mean, well, I, uh, you know, it's, you know, and, and and back to Matt. I I was I was kind of joking that I thought, I thought his when he said they're coming with the decision. I thought he was after that karaoke thing that he had done. I thought he was going to be taking over for Axl Rose as lead singer of Guns and Roses. But that would have been I was better. Wrong. Yeah. So he told me I was I was messaging him back and forth, and he was telling me what he was deciding between. It was uh, ACO, ACL, and Chippendales. And I was like, holy smokes, Matt, you're going to start dancing? <laughs> so I said, I said, what are you leaning toward? And of course he was leaning toward Chippendales, but I, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad he, I'm glad he picked cornhole. <laughs> well, see, and, and that's another thing. You know, exactly. That, that, that's another thing where, you know, people just see him on the boards and you see him, he's, he's get emotion sometimes, you know, there was that shot after that, after the one shot that Brett made. But right. you don't normally see emotion out of him all the time, right? right? Where I think that's where it'd be great to be able to let everybody else see just who he is. Like I wouldn't have expected that that night that he had the karaoke on Facebook, right? <laughs> I, I was Man, not expecting that karaoke. out of him. Oh. He loves it. He although loves my wife did, and Bud Light. <laughs> although, although my wife was like, she was upstairs. I was listening to it downstairs, and she's like. 
who are you killing downstairs? I was like, oh, I'm watching like the I'm watching the best cornhole player do karaoke. Yeah, and I I think you can enter a karaoke contest. Yeah, well, and, and that's <laughs> like I said, that's just the fun thing that the top players are. They're not just serious all the time that you see them on even on TV or Facebook or or YouTube or whatever. It's just they like having fun. Oh yeah, and I'm telling you, Matt is. It, it's crazy because when you walk up, you're. It's it's almost like a. It, it would be like the presence of Tom Brady, kind of. You know, you walk up there and it's the guy that's probably the greatest cornhole player of all time. And I've been involved in those debates where people are like, oh, he was winning when nobody played. Well, he just won last season. You know what I mean? He's the yep. winningest singles player in the American Cornhole League. So. I, I don't know. I don't know what more he needs to do for people to give him the accolade of greatest of all time. But because the game will always evolve, you're, there's always going to be some sort of debate to to some degree. But to me, that guy is the greatest player of all time. And then when you get a chance to talk to him, the the best time I ever had with him was at a tournament in South Carolina. It was at uh, a place where Trevor Brooks was. So I think it was called like 96 or 98 South Carolina. I think that was the name of the town. It's crazy. So we were all there and it was just, a, it was back when a thousand dollar prize pool was still pretty cool. People still traveled for them, you know, mm-hmm. and Matt and Brett were there and Scott and Rob Guthrie were there and Trevor and Jamie were there and Tyler was playing with somebody and Derek King was there. And so it was, a, and it was just a little bar on a Saturday and it was just a, and it started raining. Well, the night before Frank was there, Frank Modlin was there the night before we're playing in this garage where there's two sets of boards set up and it's all just money games and beer, right? We're all just having a blast. And I got a chance to stand next to Matt and throw with him for probably 45 minutes. And I was telling him some of the things that I was going through as a player with my, what I call nerves. And Matt just told me, dude, just relax. When you think when you think you need to have some tension, just relax. Just throw the effing bag in the hole, Rob. He said, if you do that, nobody can beat you. I was like, mm-hmm. that's a solid philosophy, man. Yes. <laughs> so that that that's kind of the stuff that you know, not everybody gets a chance to experience that. And that's one of the reasons I started people. Uh, people always kind of criticize me for being in the advanced division and, and not always doing very well. And I told him, you know what? I might not be an elite cornhole player, but I am an elite traveler. And I want to get to know each and every player as best as I can so that if there's a chance that somebody needs to talk about it and there's a, a statistic that needs to be thrown out or or just, just a piece three, I want to be able to accurately report that. You know what I mean? And, and yep. be part of that. And I want to be looked at as somebody who who has the factual information. So. Well, yeah, I think that's that's just, the same yeah. for me now. When I when I travel to different just, tournaments here now, but it's yeah. – <laughs> it's when I, when I travel to different tournaments here now, it's – I'm sitting and I'll just watch like a, a, a lower division play just because I want to get to know those players. So when they do get a, a – when they do move up to the advanced, I, I know who they are, how they play. Yeah. And that's one of the things now that's a little different than what it used to be. You were asking about changes earlier. One of the other changes that is very evident is the rise of a player. It's become almost meteoric, right? A guy like a guy like Scott Lane has been great for a long time, but he didn't rise fast. A guy like Tyler Poitras has been great for a long time. And Jamie has been – he's been good, 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 you know, great. And these guys that have been around for a long time have been great for a long time. But all of a sudden you see a guy like No Wooten come up out of nowhere, like a year and a half in the game, and this guy's winning nationals. You know, and that's one of the things that I think is one of the biggest changes. And that's why you have to get to know those guys in that lower division because you got to see that talent and be able to understand where it's going to go. Yeah, and it's, you know, and, and you talk about Noah Wooten. There's another guy where, you know, when, when he was 
with living with Matt Sorrell, you know, when you're all thrown on Matt Sorrell's dock, you've got to put it on the board or you're losing your bags. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, that was how, that was how Matthew and I were talking uh, one time. We were trying to figure out how to add pressure to practice. And all of a sudden, like it was an epiphany. He calls me on the phone. And he says, Rob, I figured out how to add pressure to my practice. I'm like, what? And he shows me uh, FaceTime. He says, look, I'm throwing on my dock. I'm like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, but when you get down there and you get a chance to play there, there's no doubt that you can make it to the water. <laughs> so it adds a little bit of pressure to your practice. And and you've seen and, and Matthew's really come on. I I have the pleasure of of actually playing with him in his first organized tournament. He came to a blind draw and he came out to play and there he was. He was 14 years old and learning to play the game. And uh, it was it was pretty awesome to just see him take such a love to the game and become really what he is now as an ambassador of the game as well. It, you know, he's a he's a very highly respected pro and he's he's in and part of this game and could be forever. And you know how it, it could be for now. You know what I mean? That's the, the beauty of this game. Although if, if people do watch you when you're live from your from your league, I don't think you've ever called him Matthew. It's always just short shorts. Yeah, that's for sure. That's a, a <laughs> another one that uh, he, somebody asked him. I think it was uh, it was either Stormy or Danielle. Somebody asked him in his first year as a pro, and he made the broadcast. They asked him if he ever had any if he had any nicknames, and that's the one he gave was short shorts. Was the actual one that I gave him. So that was like the first the first real person who used the nickname that I called him out somewhere in public was uh, to me, that was cool as heck. <laughs> well, yeah. And it's, and that's, you know, and again, like I say, like you just make things fun. It's, you know, it's cause if you can't laugh and have fun playing this game, I think you have no business playing this game just because, I agree. you know, like watching, like we, we played one way up here. Then after being in Cherokee and seeing the way everybody was and having fun, it just it, – it, it we brought it – like there was only six of us. We brought it back here to be able to laugh. Like when it comes to our league nights up here now, who cares? Like we, we just go and have fun. But yes. when we get to our tournaments, we get a little more serious. But our league nights are just – you know, if you're going to get serious – if you're going to get serious over winning, like, like for us up here is, is 20 or 30 bucks – Right. You know, just whatever. You're only putting 10 in. You don't need to be, you know, full on <laughs> serious. Right. Just just have some fun. Yeah. I mean, and if you're not having fun, that's when you really got to evaluate what you're doing, because that's the bottom line in this game. We didn't get into it because we thought we were going to be millionaires. We got into it because we were throwing bags in a hole and you were talking to your mom on the other end telling her, you ain't going to beat me, mom. <laughs> so, it, you know, it, it happened at a barbecue. And I it just – but when you watch the rise of the game, you see some of the players get to the point where that, that $10 does bother them. And when they mm -hmm. when they do draw my mom, who wasn't going to beat me anyway, they, they get a little mad or they, they, they find a way to be upset about it. And that's – I've always wanted to be the guy that, that – not only gave somebody a good experience, but might even have got them into the money and had a good experience. And that, that was my, you know, that, that was one of my goals when I first started playing. Yeah. I know we, uh, even back on the weekend here, I know he's going to hear me and he's just throwing bags just downstairs here. But uh, Jamie Cowan, we still bug him about almost taking out the uh, chandelier in the uh, ballroom of in Cherokee. <laughs> but the, the first night we, we got there, we thought we were all, we thought we were everything. You know, we started throwing and uh, we ran into Madden, who was there throwing. And we thought, oh, this guy must make this big pro, but Madden hardly ever plays. And right. we couldn't even touch him when we were playing. We we're like, Okay, somebody's got to beat him, but we we couldn't come close. And he's he's another guy that's just you know I think he would have so many cornhole stories with the stuff that he's done. You know? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It just just his trips to other countries. You know, he's he went to Australia with his parents, and they kind of brought some some of the game there. I mean, just just knowing what 
just it's endless opportunity this game and and a worldwide reach because anybody could play and anybody can win <laughs> just just again back to that yeah yeah it's it, it's just a, a simple little phrase but it's just it, it, it means everything in this game right right it's, so, de- it's definitely a draw i mean you 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 don't realize like a guy like me when in the pro division uh, it may not be the same way in the pro division, but when you start, that's definitely the way that it is, you know, in the backyard. Yeah. Now, don't get me ma- don't get me wrong. My mom wasn't ever going to win, but. <laughs> well, no, and, and that's the thing is we have so many new players up here that are coming out each week before all COVID hit. We were, we were just on that cusp of really kind of coming through, but just we get them out. And if we find, if we can have them having fun, and and just getting into it, they're going to come back. But if they're getting beat all the time, getting frustrated, we almost lose them. So it's so that's why it's it's great that we have guys like Jamie, have guys like Scott. Um, we've got Steve Poole, who's also gone down to to the the ACL finals a couple of times. They go and they help people. They see the new people coming along, and they help them. And that's kind of what almost every every pro player will do. And that's I think that's the, the best thing that can happen for the game. For sure. For sure. That's, I mean, to be an ambassador of the game is how you grow the game and the growth of the game happens with new players, not, not with us pros and, and with us people that are in it, it happens with the people who aren't in it yet. And, and that's who we got to go get. Those are the people we have to appeal to. So with that, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, we'll save some more stories for the next time you come on. Maybe with cool. a little less, than, a little less than a year away. Maybe <laughs> I mean, man, you let me know. If this this Monday night stuff's pretty easy for me, so yeah, I like yeah. it. So, I, so yeah. So remember, if uh, you're in St. Thomas, Ontario, you're going to be starting here November 11th. Uh, Wallaceburg, you're on. You're going to go up next week. Check them both out on Facebook. St. Thomas Cornhole, Wallaceburg Cornhole League. Uh, check out jccornhole.com. Jamie does great work with great boards. And uh, he's, he's got his Octane Bieber bags. Then uh, you've got the uh, OctaneCornhole.com. Check out all their great stuff because there's a lot of guys in South Florida. Even uh, Rob's even got a chance to check them out as well too, the uh, the Octane bags. And they're just – they're hot stuff. And uh, if you're watching and you're going to be in South Florida, I believe that uh, – I know Anderson Glenn may have some bags to sell. I'm not sure, along with Mike. And a couple of other pros. So hit them up if you're uh, if you're looking for some uh, ACL or ACL approved Octane Cornhole Pro bag. So with that, Rob, again, this has been awesome. Thanks for coming on and uh, and and sharing some cornhole stories. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. Hey, I got some of those Octane bags for sale too at the the conference this weekend. So okay, so I got some from up. that too. So I got them. <laughs> hit, hit, hit up, hit up, Rob. Especially Rob. Really look at Rob to get some some uh, ACL bags. I know he will not be hard to find uh, for anything. I know with uh, with the way he's been with his, with any time I've seen him only once, but even seen him online. So <laughs> thanks. So man. again. Thank you very much for doing this. And everyone else, stay safe. Keep having fun playing cornhole. Check out this weekend. If you're not doing anything, sit your butt on the couch. Watch the uh, the Boardman Cornhole Facebook page for uh, some great cornhole action out of South Florida. And uh, like I said, just have some fun. And we'll see you next week on the Down and Back. <laughs>